14 podcast presented by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book, Bet Local. Uh, Santiago Espinola got traded. He's not a Toronto Blue Jay. Our guy, the earned dog, woof, 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 has won the spot, it seems. He has etched out Santiago Espinola. Avery, immediate reaction. I mean, you said it was a nothing burger of a trade. You're kind of right. Yeah, yeah. But it, for us, it means something. It means a little bit more to us. Yeah, it's clearing a 40-man roster spot for one of the backup catchers they're going to have to they're going to have to put on the roster because Jano uh, is still hurt. To me, Ernie just won his spot. It's the simple thing that you want to have the chance to go into camp and just win a spot. And sometimes you're on the outside looking in, which it kind of seemed that way at the start for Ernie, but he played so well. He has been so good that that you just can't not put him on the team. Someone was going to claim him if he had to, in um, half a second. We yeah. talked about this. I talked about this with Blake on Sunday. Uh, he kind of was going to get picked up. Like, I mean, I talked about it with Blake. Luplo got picked up in 30 minutes by the Phillies when he went on waivers. Like, imagine a guy like Ernie Clement who has is such is, has such good bat-to-ball and, uh, like, just no strikeouts, no whiffs. So, yeah, um, every, everyone for- saw him as a major league player, and that's all you want to ask for. And once other people around the league started thinking the same thing with Ernie, uh, it just made sense. So the thing, just in general, he wasn't better defensively or run better or hit for contact better than Ernie. Or uh, and like Ernie was better than Espinal at those three things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, he doesn't yeah. hit and he doesn't hit for more power than David Schneider. So it's like once Ernie kept doing this and he was putting on a show this spring, man. I we watched today. Uh, triple to start, right? And then yeah. another single up the middle. Off, and he, uh, not off a bum either. Off yeah, the Glacier. The closer, the closer yeah. for the Braves. Uh, and then he steals the base, and he's like, he's just playing ball at this point. Am I worried that this thing might shake off if they don't play him every day, which they don't plan to play they him won't. every day? I mean, I don't think they will play him every day. Yeah, and he won't. He won't play every day. So I'm worried yeah. about that. But that shows there's so many players in baseball that if you give them a legit chance to play every single day, they will be much more productive. And hey, Espinal might even be that guy too, where he's better when he plays every day. I'm not sure, but yeah, SP has- SP did get treated unfairly, even by us, because yeah. it was just like, hey, we wanted Ernie to make the team no matter what, and maybe talking down on SP, uh, just how we talk. It's not a not a mean thing to the players. I don't think we were that hard on Espinal. We just no, not that crazy. hard. It's just like. You said he fucking sucks. Obviously, these players don't fucking suck, guys. Um, just wanted Ernie to make the team at that point. For so, sure. Yeah. Espy always always seemed good spirits. Bo's best buddy. Uh, like he seemed like a good guy. I, I never heard a single. Yeah, no, I've heard nothing but good things about Espinal. I've heard yeah. nothing but good things so, about Espinal. As the person, it sucks. I'm happy for Ernie to be making this team out of camp. Hope he can uh, keep it up. But uh, Espy is off to Cincinnati for. Chris McIlvain or Ethan? Chris, I think, right? I think it's Chris, yes, okay. with a K. The only thing I know about that name uh, is that his brother is the best SEC freshman pitcher in baseball. I don't so, have no idea. I have, no idea, about the, yeah, I have no idea about the older <laughs> brother. Um, I'm guessing they're brothers because they both went to Vandy. Yeah, I know yeah, nothing yeah. about this guy. So Ross is playing chess. He's like trying to make the guy comfortable before he signs him. The He's best doing the, the LeBron SEC. and Brawny thing, which is yes. smart. I do respect that, but uh, if you're not if you're not fired up for fucking baseball season at this time of the year, check your pulse. Oh, we man. saw a guy on Twitter that's not fired up that said the Jays are going to finish last. That is, those aren't real people. Twitter people aren't real. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm so, says it all the time. I am so fucking excited, man. We got to watch baseball today. We woke up. I woke up at four thirty today. Drove an hour to Kitchener and watched ball. We watched the we watched the dead ball era show up. But it was awesome to just see baseball that meant shit again. Dude, I'm, and, and, and I'm so thing, excited for next Thursday. Yeah. And another thing about Espinal, man, is like, um, it's just, I feel like the Ernie story just kind of doesn't pull on the heartstrings more, but a guy that got DFA'd by legitimately the worst team in baseball last year. He got DFA'd by them. Career on the, like, I don't know where he's going to go, you know? I mean, no team had to commit to... Ernie Clement, they didn't have any ties to him. I mean, the guy was like not an early draft pick, wasn't really projectable, kind of struggled. And the guy just continues to grind away and figures it out in Buffalo, puts up really good numbers, comes to the show and kind of replicates that. And he goes into spring training where many people had him getting cut. Like many people had him not making this team opening day. 
and he just puts his fucking balls on the table and just rakes and gives this team an impossible situation to make where it's it's either Espinal, the three million dollar guy, or we're gonna ride with with Ernie Clement, who has earned this spot, who's looked great defensively, uh, great at the plate. The, More the thing today, we than... should we should have known today once he played left field. He yes. has played eighty six innings in left field in the majors, and uh, it was like okay, let's see how. But I'm also confused by it because Schneider was in the lineup too. Yes. Do they not like Schneider's defense in left field as much? And because Ernie looks sick in the outfield. Oh, he does. He looks really fast. good. Yeah. yeah. He is fast. And cutting off. We see it the Dalton Varsha way when he plays left field, just cutting off balls to the wall. If yeah. you can get there quicker, you don't need the stronger arm. So I, I wouldn't even know what to do with sprint speed. But uh, it. It seemed inevitable to everyone else, but you don't know how the front office is going to react because there's different things that they value than us, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think everyone's main concern was, were they going to make what we thought was the right decision? And will it pay off? Fucking hope so. Yeah, I hope so, too. And Ernie's going to have to adjust to that role where he was kind of last year where he wasn't playing every day. Uh, playing every once in a while and kind of be productive at that. And I think he can do that. I, a guy that is going to adopt any single role he has, look great and left today. And I know this isn't the Ernie uh, dick sucking show, but I'm just pumped for our guy, man. I really am. I see, I know how good of a dude he is. We all do. He's been on the podcast. And uh, yeah, you just love to see it. But um, uh, one thing I wanted to go to, I wanted to tell a story about Paris, Texas Sunday night. Because I know a lot of Leafs fans listen to this. So it's very funny. So Sunday night, me, Alto, Curtis, we uh, go to Paris, go to the Zach Bryan concert. By the way, one of the best concerts ever. The guy puts on an absolute fucking clinic. <laughs> like, he is insane. Have you seen a concert that you haven't liked? Uh, yeah. Uh, Brad Paisley was okay. Like, I didn't really like him. There's been a couple country artists I, I've you, saw. Like, you've seen a bunch of big artists recently, too. So that would yeah, be disappointing yeah, if they yeah. went. But, um, yeah, so we go there. Uh, it's packed, right? Because um, Paris, Texas is doing an event after the concerts, both concerts. So it's literally like wall to wall packed in there. And we get to the front at about 11, 30, 12. And Matthew Nyes, uh, Morgan Riley, and Austin Matthews are like in the corner beside us at the front, like where you get let in. And uh, the bouncer brings them around off, like to go to the back so they don't go to the front entrance and get bombarded by people. It's like Matthews has a black hoodie on, kind of wearing it above his mouth so no one recognizes him. I mean... We're obviously going to recognize them because the rest of the guys were just not covered up. So we knew that was Matthews. And uh, Joel Edmondson shows up late. So Joel Edmondson is by himself in front of Paris, Texas. No one notices him besides, of course, Michael Alto. Alto goes, Joel, side door. Like just alphas the shit out of Joe. Joel, or Joel Edmondson walks not to the side door, to the bar beside Paris, Texas. So we take that as an opportunity. Like, all right, this is how we get in. So – uh, we go up, we pass Joel. We're like, Joel, come with us. Joel's following us to the side. And he's like, has a massive dip in. I'm like, Joel, like, is that a dip? Can I have one? He's like, yeah, buddy, for sure. <laughs> and he passes up the dip, passes me the dip. And it's a 30 milligrams in. And I put it in and I am just, I am fucked. Pluto. Yeah. yeah, Pluto. So we walk through the back. Joel, like, is like, these guys are with me, which was like the most alpha, sh unreal shit ever. Cause he just met us. And, uh, we are waiting like in this kind of halfway pla place between the booth where the Leafs guys are and like the security obviously surrounding them. And uh, Joel Edmondson uh, is like just talking to us like, I'm Joel, by the way, guys. We're like, we, we know you're Joel pretty like we're just whatever. He's like, where are you guys from here? And Alto goes, yeah, like we're we live right there. And Joel's like, oh, sex, sex, sex. So then Joel walks to his booth with like Matthews, Riley, literally the entire team was there pretty much besides Marner. And he goes, all right, fellas, see you, boy. Shook our hand and just we never saw him again. But Joel Edmondson, <laughs> biggest beauty of all time. What an absolute fucking legend Joel Edmondson is. And, that, and that's going to show you. Paris, Texas is insane. I had, I had a little different weekend than you. I went, I went to Virginia to see uh, my brother play some golf. But last week, Wednesday, I, d I guess I haven't told the story on here yet. Yeah. Um, driving on the Gardner, we get to stop traffic where Lakeshore and the Gardner meet. Um, and you go, you're like right into the city pretty much before the Raptors facility and it stopped and I just get smoked in the, from behind my car. Uh, some guy just fucking smokes me pull over is the loudest noise I'd ever heard in my life. I was like, my car has to be ruined. Cause I drive a piece of garbage car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I was just like, please, please be the end of it. Uh, 
and I go back and the car is somehow fine. My loser piece of car makes it out. Uh, all it has is two, two of his license plate screws are stuck in the back of my car. I had to take out. So now they're just permanently more aerodynamic with screws, uh, screw holes in the back of my car. Sore back, made it alive. Are you going to tell the people about the insurance info? Yeah, I was so fuck it. Because I was fine at the time, and my car was fine, I thought. And I just, like, didn't get it. He comes, he parks pretty far up. I'd say, like, 50, 100 meters. And I see him backing up, and then he stop, He almost hits someone again. And he comes sprinting down the gardener to come see if I'm okay. <laughs> and I was just so done with this guy. He didn't speak a lot of English. I was like, man, like, I'm fine. Just like get the fuck out of here, and I didn't take his information. Nothing insane bad has happened stuff. since. I know insane I just, stuff, insane yeah. stuff from every so Get it's people's good. information when they hate you with their car. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good learning point for the kids out there. I have. I podcast. have another. I have another thing to say. Yeah, Joey Votto, the note. Okay. Yes. Let's go into that. By the way, impossible to read. Just write normal, please. I, very Joey Votto to write it in cursive. Um. So I, half the fan base can't read it. The first one was easy to read. The second one got really hard to read. And the third one was okay. So my thing with Joey Votto was those quotes had always thrown me off. I said that I didn't, I had some hate towards Joey Votto because of that. Probably on hate was too strong of a word. I just said, I didn't like that quote at all. He comes out and he says, sorry about it again. I think, I don't know who was in. There's no way we were the ones that made him say that no. But that was kind of the consensus. If you don't like Joey Votto, the only reason was because of what he had said before. So he comes back out and he apologizes for it again. And at this point, I just got to be a bigger man. Shout out to him. The apology. He he didn't put it behind him. He said it again. He apologized. Time for me to move on. Uh, Joey Votto, happy to have him part of the Blue Jays. Welcome home, Joey. Um, and I, I'm over that. I'm over it. Very heartfelt. Uh, the mother thing really hit me, whereas like my mom called me and pretty much just ripped into me for uh, essentially just like just shitting on the country that she lives in that I was grew up in. So uh, it takes a lot of man to do that, especially a bit when you're wrong. Uh, some people don't do that. So shout out to Joey Votto for uh, being the bigger man and apologizing for those comments. I, I like that, that, that. I like that he still brought it up because it's got to be uncomfortable for him too, right? Yeah, and it wasn't saying comments. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so whatever. Um, but other than that, though, let's go into some other things here. I mean, uh, we got to come up with a new victory song, right? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, the season's next week. so Yeah, and we need a video for it, man. But, Our guy Judah can cook that up quick, I'm sure. Or Rock could do it. Rock's Rocko. really good. Yeah, um, Rock or Judah. I think Sandstorm's got to be up there. Sandstorm, uh, Pump It Up is... I- I don't want to run it back with pump it up solely based on the fact that it has bad memories for me because this team essentially we've, we've never got to play it in the playoffs, man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I don't know, but I, the I, Phillies I, are running back dancing on my own for the eighth time in a row, but they made it to the world series using that song, but they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't win and they okay. stole the song from another team. I would love the, uh, I would personally love if our listeners came up with one sandstorm, is incredible all time yeah. song. There's Scarlet behind me there. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave it up to listeners to figure out what the the, the song should be. I think we have a couple options, P- preferably house music, yeah, because uh, it would be incredible and we could play it just to fire the boys up. But we're open to suggestions. We're open to suggestions. I know Bassett listens to this. I know Swanee. If you guys come up with something, we will not be opposed to it. So I- no. I'm looking forward to seeing what the options are here, and I'm looking forward to seeing what these people come up with. I really am. Uh, one more housekeeping thing. Yes. Next Thursday. I don't know if you talked about this with Blake. Um, uh, yes, I did. Just for a little bit, though. Okay. Well, we have an event going on at St. Yep. Louis, 595 Bay Street, I believe. Let, let's make sure that is correct. It is going to start at 3.30. I actually don't know what you and I are going to do, but the whole premise of it is to just watch opening day the jays with the boys like with yes. everyone and the best like, part I about this is is there's no like the, the the next day is a day off it's it's a good friday yeah so get banged up watch the jays with us there is tons of giveaways they're doing they're giving away tickets jerseys merch they're giving away tons of stuff yeah. so they're the the main giveaway is blue jays tickets and yeah. the thing is the craziest blue jays jersey you can wear so 
for me, it's like I have the green Jays jersey that yes. not a lot of people have. Or I wear the Frank Thomas. You wear something like that. Uh, the best one is going to win some Blue Jays tickets. But that's brought to you by Sports Interaction. I will make sure. Where is it here? I'll make a TikTok about it next week. I'll make a TikTok yeah. about it next week. To, okay, to, five, 595 Bay Street, St. Louis Bar and Grill, 330. It's going to start. And we have a limit of 100 people, I believe. Yeah, and we, a lot of people showed up to that bar night. So I wish want, we could have a million people. Yeah, so and if you want to get in, choice. If, if you want to get in, you just know you kind of have you. Can, I hate like you have to come fairly early. Like, yeah, that's just how it is. So, but it's a. I don't know if we're gonna be on the mic doing the game or something like that. I'm pretty but, sure we will be. Okay, but we yeah. will be watching the game. Have have all the boys together and girls. Uh, yeah, boys and that. girls will be there. It's uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna and. Uh, we've never done a watch party before. We've always talked about doing the podcast. We've had people reach out about us doing it. So this is a good opportunity to kind of just watch the game with everyone, do a live stream in person with everyone, essentially, and uh, watch some Blue Jays, man. Watch the Blue Jays. I mean, we got ball back. Does it get any better than that? No. This is this is the best time of year. Everyone zero and zero. Everyone besides a third of the league thinks they can make the playoffs and make a push. Uh, very exciting. But opening yes. day rocks. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. So – uh, that will be awesome. But another thing, speaking of opening day, Jose Barrios, opening day starter. The last time, I didn't realize this. We did trivia today at work. And uh, Jose Barrios was the opening day starter in 2022. I had no idea about that. That's uh, Apparently, well, he just he went one inning, one out. One, Yeah, one out. It was horrible. It was the Rangers game. Yes. I was there for that. And, yeah, maybe the worst start ever. <laughs> third, of, third of an inning, and it started a bad season for – Jose Brios, nice. Hope that it goes better this time. Obviously, yeah. it'll be nice for him to uh, to back that up. But it should have been a Kevin Gosman thing. Uh, we know he's the ace of this team. We want him to be ready. But Jose Brios has looked awesome this spring. It's game. crazy to me that Kevin Gosman has never started an opening day for the Blue Jays. Isn't that insane? Yep. Insane, insane stuff. But uh, excited for Brios. Earned it. What a 2023 he's had. Manoa and, being the and, opening day starter last year is very funny in hindsight. Yeah, because he's, I don't know what he is doing. I think they said he's not throwing yet, or what, what do they say he's doing, Avery? Uh, flat ground only. Uh, he hasn't been off a mound in weeks, it seems like. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's good if you're a pitcher and you can't throw off the mound. Yeah, so have... he, yeah, he'll be starting in AAA, uh, which is... Uh, by the way, Austin Matthews hat trick, legend. But uh, besides the <laughs> fact, um, yeah, see, Jose Barrios, we've seen the kind of roller coaster of a career he's had with the Blue Jays. 2021, he was incredible. 2022, he was bad. 2023, he was great. Um, we hope he can replicate that. But this team has some awesome depth to to, fit, to help that out with, with the Gossman being out for maybe one or two starts. Uh, Bowden Francis has stepped in there and looked great. I mean, he is unbelievable, man. He really is. Yeah, uh, uh, he basically had a major league start today against the Braves, and yes. four and two thirds he gets out two runners on. They both do score, so that looks bad on his line. But I thought, I thought he was really good again today. He's he's earned his shot. He's going to be the four guy starting. I don't know how Gosman lines up, um, but it looks like Kikuchi is going to be lined up to go in Houston. Yes, so he will he will be starting as the five guy. You said uh, more more damage, like Tucker and Gordon Alvarez, left-handers, and most of the Rays' big hitters are right-handed hitters. Uh, so it makes yeah. sense for Kikuchi to start in Houston. Yeah, I, and, and Kikuchi, again, guy that's looked pretty good this spring, pretty decent this spring. So uh, who do you think slots in that five now? Do you think Mitch White will make a couple spot starts? I, th I think the easy thing to do is the Mitch White-Trevor Richards piggyback. And... Uh, as much as Mr. Baby, great article today, YJ's talked about Trevor Richards throwing more than one inning isn't great for him. Yes. Uh, it, he's the long man of this team if Nate doesn't make the team. And yes. I don't know. And I don't think, uh, I don't think Nate's been pushed that long to be more than a one inning. Well, guy Nate actually spring. has not looked that bad this spring outside of that first appearance, right? No, no. We see some people tweeting, uh, every time Nate throws a really good inning. And he's an interesting piece, too, because people have totally written him off. He looked really good in spurts last season as well. He has, but he didn't write back, though. No, he has he has the arm that can throw it faster than fuck, but we just got, got to figure out a way to harness that and miss some miss some barrels for Nate. Yeah. Be okay. Yeah. And uh, Nate, yeah, Nate Pearson looked awesome. But what is your situation here? I mean, uh, Romano has uh, 
come down with, I believe, a little bit of an injury, right? Yeah, elbow inflammation. Uh, where he elbow got... inflammation for uh, Romano. So and he, what... got, he got an injection for it too. That's yes, which isn't. I mean, and not Swan a... Swanee's dealing with something too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, the one good thing I think the Blue Jays have good bullpen depth. Yes. You can bring Chad Dallas up, and he'll be okay. Does it push the guys like Richards up a spot? Uh, Jimmy's not going to have low leverage situations this to start this season, which I think he's fine with because I think Jimmy's going to be have a really good year. Uh, Jimmy's Hensus, look great. Yeah, Hensus Cabrera is going to have to get big outs again, and you still have you still have Mesa. Uh, I don't know who's going to lock down the back end if those guys aren't ready. Uh, uh, I, like it might be it might be Jimmy. It might be him, or it might be Mesa, but it's it'll be matchup based because those two guys. It makes more sense to uh, sp platoon split them more righties or more lefties. What do you think about uh like the Chad Green stuff potentially? Um, it makes sense based based on how they feel about him. Uh, I he hasn't been that great this spring, so it'll be he interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. But uh, P. I'd be fine. Said, P, P. Walker said he's working on stuff, though, right? Yeah, that is the thing that's always interesting to me is, are these players bad right now, or are they actually working on things? And we like yeah. to give the benefit of the doubt to the old guys and no benefit to the young guys Yeah, for working on things. Um, Chad Green's been doing this for long enough. I I will wait till his first three, four outings to that's see. Fair. Uh, how, how it actually is That's and again fair, josh i just got to push the right buttons we saw it with my shilt today for the padres he just pressed the wrong buttons it's it's part of the game the guys who you pencil into slots are going to pitch shitty in big leverage situations uh, it's kind of i would go i would go i would go jimmy as my guy to start the season i think as the closer if that's really yeah. over swanee uh i'm guessing swanee would be hurt okay where do you slot like do you Yario looked pretty decent. I mean, that's another guy. That's Dude, I have him. no idea what you do with him. He's slated to pitch two innings, two innings on Saturday against the yes. O's again, I believe. Yeah, uh, that's a tough matchup. It doesn't matter if you're facing their A, B, or C squad. You're going to be facing guys who are better than some of the Jays players. I do have no idea. I didn't even watch his outing yet. I, after this, I'm going to go back and do that and see what's up with him. Looked pretty good. So I think they Pretty have good. to make they have to make a decision after the start where he's going to be. I mean, it's almost the season. You have to make a decision on everyone. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because options in my head don't make. I don't understand player options. Me neither. And, I'll never get it. Sorry, I, under, get it. I understand how they work. I never know uh, how it makes sense for those guys. So I don't know if yeah. starting them in the big leagues and setting them down. Like I just don't. Maybe that can't even happen. So uh, I think they'll just have to send them to AAA to start. And maybe you let them get another start there. The Mitch White experiment goes wrong, and it's like, okay, we need to we need him up in the big leagues. I think they're gonna they're gonna need him more than we thought, um, because it was like, hey, he can be half the season in AAA. He hasn't faced hitters in a full season uh, since the World Baseball Classic last year. Uh, I think he's gonna be thrusted up the uh, thrusted up the board. Yeah, I. I Yariel's an interesting one. Uh, Nate's an interesting one. There's tons of interesting guys there. I mean, Chad Dallas as well. So uh, I, it's it's going to be a very uh, kind of like a crapshoot to start the season off. And that's what, yeah. like, we knew injuries were going to happen. That's what happens at the end of the day. Injuries happen. It sucks to say, but uh, next man up mentality. And we've been lucky to have a pretty, pretty good depth, like pretty good depth pitching wise. And last year was one of the best pitching staffs in baseball. Top three, I believe, or top four in baseball. So uh, we've been lucky. I, I, I'm it's just going to be start of the year. We don't know who's going to be the closer. We don't know who's going to have that entrance walking into the, the stadium or walking onto the mound uh, at the Rogers center opening day, but fuck it. We got ball next week. Yeah. Thank God. We have something to talk about really, man. It's off season's finally over. This team was so healthy last year. It sucks. We didn't even make it to opening day before we had to worry about the health of the starting rotation uh, this season. And that's what happens when you, are on like you count on those guys so much. Romano, Swanee, two guys who were you. Swanee, I remember talking to him. We went on the field to take a picture with him, and he had been used. It felt like five out of every six days. It was just like, hey, Swanee. it was insane. This like, 
Eric Swanson was used a trillion times. <laughs> yeah, last year. He really the most was. innings he's ever pitched by like double. Yeah, and so, I'm sure throwing a splitter all the time is going to make your elbow and forearm feel pretty good. Yeah, just throwing every day. It's works. their jobs. They they do it better than anyone else. But you work those guys to the bone last year, and that's what happened. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. But uh, yeah, ball man. I it's uh that we got a little taste today of regular season ball, and then next week. We have actual Blue Jays games. So we're literally, once this drops, we will be one week away yeah. from regular season baseball the, for the Toronto Blue Jays. The best thing about the Jays being injured is everyone else in the ALE seems to be getting injured, too. Yes. Uh, Garrett Cole, Rip, Aaron Judge, I'm sure his toe is going to get ruined at some point again. He's locked into center field, though. That That is so crazy. Yeah. That is so, so Absolutely crazy. insane stuff. Insane stuff that he's playing so, center. So, Sunday, we are going to have the season preview podcast. Yes. Um, I think we might, maybe we'll do one before opening day, like the Wednesday, a yeah. shorter one to say something again. But uh, I'll run through that. It'll just be, I'll go over team stats and we'll have predictions over under. I'll go through players for the Jays. I'll do the pitchers. I'll do like their what their projected strikeouts. Uh, and ERA is if over or under for some of that. And then wins for position players. We'll go over or under on a bunch of them. And we'll have some other fun things in like surprise acquisition. Um, a little more structured podcast on Sunday. Yes. Yeah, it will be fun. But uh, we did listener questions for this episode. So do you have uh, some of the stuff there? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go to the Discord ones first. You can go get the ones on Twitter. Okay. Um. Uh, let's pull this okay, up. this is a class. This is what guy asks us all the time. Pete Walker's career wins above replacement as a player is 3.4. Uh, he asked what his career war would be as a coach, but I think it is an obvious one. His wins above replacement as a coach is 30 times better than it was as a player. Yeah, it's uh, look at the Pete. track record he's had recently, man. Pistol Pete's that dude, brother. Yeah. He's that dude. He's a bad man. There's there's some Cy Young votes in there. What every year the past four years, three years at least, um, yeah. a bunch of reclamation projects like Matt's, Robbie Ray, turning around. You say uh, he's Barrios. He's done. Pete's done a fucking awesome job. Shout out Pistol Pete, man. Shout out Pistol Pete. Um, uh, incredible stuff out of the out of the out of the goat. After Vlad and Bo, who will be our best overall hitter this year? I think Varsho or no Kirk. Kirk. Kirk has looked wow, wow. Yeah. Uh, Kirk is wa- like walking a decent amount. I think no, that's Varsho walking a decent amount. Kirk is uh putting, hitting the ball hard. Uh, not getting out of his comfort zone. Looks incredible at the plate. So I'm excited for Kirk, but. A little bit of a tidbit here. We will not have to discuss that Vladi had a good spring last year as well. That's something we we can't talk about. Yeah, I did. I did write that in because I thought it was an easy engagement tweet today. If I got it off, uh, I would just tweet Vladi's really bad spring from last year. And he said, oh, he's turning it around. Get a good spring. But he also had a great first 35 games. And then the potential injury. And then the rest injury. Yeah, I did. I did a video on the Gate 14 YouTube. It was my sorry project for missing Sunday. I didn't really miss Sunday. You just had to go to Zach Bryan early, yeah. and I got, I got in at six. Um, but there's there's some good tidbits if you like stats on some of those guys. And Kirk, um, his main problem last season, uh, Hunter Mentz is the hitting coach. He said that pitcher just threw him backwards, and he wasn't ready for that. So that means breaking balls early, fastballs late, yeah. got him off. And he was lunging a lot, which makes sense to the other part of the zone. Yeah. And Lung- I do want to talk about Varsho as well. Uh, Varsho new stance looks unreal and he's pulling the ball hard like hitting the ball hard this spring i'm not really locked into baseball savant this is just from me watching all the games varsho looks great uh it's the year of dalton varsho that ball he hit out yesterday my god that ball was annihilated so seeing Uh, more of that will be a iggy gave gave us a stat on dalton varsho that was the first home run he had hit off a left-hander including spring training since september Since September 9th, 2022, I believe. And I think it was off Austin Gomber of the Rockies. Absurd stuff. Yeah. Absurd. He, and that's for left-handers, you would think uh, 
when you get left on left like Varsha does, you just you just pull out and you make shitty contact. So yeah, it's a stay in, get the bat head out front, and uh, hit some home runs. Yeah, so shout that, out. That's to... very good. I am the episode name I put for this Johnny was uh, save it for the season because oh, yes. this this offense, I'm ready to just Matt Hag should be a manager. <laughs> He should run a baseball program. Like, We're horned up for Hag, brother. We're horned like, up for Hag. Maybe it's not the whole thing, but holy fuck, everywhere this guy goes, everywhere he has his hand in the bucket, they just rake. He's got people back. So who knows if it's actually him, but I am willing to put my life on the line for Matt Hag being the best hitting coach of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, like speaking about the spring, because someone says, who else do you like? Who do you guys have coming off the bench? Daniel Vogelbach didn't hear no bell. No, uh, it's it. I don't know what this team's going to do. This is a tough, tough decision. I think Ernie's locked in. Like we mentioned, I think Votto Schneider. might. Do you think Votto starts in triple A Avery? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. The, the rolling of the ankle thing kind of fucked him, right? No shit. Uh, he was coming into camp late and then you roll your ankle on the bat. Fuck man. Like, He's not giving himself a chance to be ready for the opening day team. Yeah. Uh, Espinal clears 2.45 million, I believe I saw. And the one thing that I will listen to an unnamed podcast, it they didn't think it would make sense to, because if Vogelback makes the big leagues, he's 2 million. Votto makes the big leagues, he's 2 million. They didn't think it would make sense to bring Vogelback up, have Votto in the minors, and then cut ties with Vogelback have to pay him the $2 million anyways, and then bring Votto up. So once I heard that argument, I thought, hey, for sure, it kind of makes sense that Votto would just make the team straight up. You uh, think but so? At, I... But at this point, I maybe that cap room has cleared for them, and they're okay to eat some of it. If Votto plays his way, like Ernie, onto the team from AAA. Okay. He's too he's too late, in my opinion. There, yeah, he's too way late. too late. It's, it's, it's too late for Joey Votto to make this team. The ro- the rolling of the ankle really screwed him over, unfortunately. That is, the ol- that is the oldest guy move of all time, too. Yeah, it's it sucks. It absolutely sucks. But Vogelbach being off the bench, I mean, I don't know how many F-bats he gets this year, but he's a serviceable off-the-bench bat. I think Eduardo Escobar, 100%, is not going to make the team. Uh, that's just pretty clear. But... I, I've seen, another question that we got on the Twitter is, is do you see a world where Ernie Clement potentially starts at third base? No, no they they paid IKF Aaron Judge money to play third but base. IKF looks good at the plate. This, I know it's spring training. You got to take it with a grain of salt. But IKF has been raking this spring. Like, that's not uh, a hot take. That's not like me being in it. He's hitting like 330, I think, or 320 this spring. Uh, with no home runs, no power. Yeah. He's fuck it. Let's hit 300. But, uh, <laughs> IKF is lurk- looking serviceable and he's looked, he's really good defensively. He really is. Yeah. I, I think there's zero chance Ernie is the opening day third baseman over yeah. IK. Just look at how much money a free agent they brought in and they overpaid based on market value to get him. Yeah. They wanted IKF. He's their opening day, uh, third baseman. Yeah. A lot of these questions here, we've kind of answered in, in our chats. Um, yeah. They have Votto, Vogel back, Manoa, where should he start the season? Fifth spot in the rotation. What are we going to do with Manoa? What, let's get a let's get a litmus test. How do we feel? Like Are, are we kind of just disappointed with Manoa again? Yeah, I would say. He's injured, though. Fuck. Like, it's hard to be disappointed in a guy that's injured. At yes. The end of the day, you know? Um, like, it, it's really hard to, I uh, I don't know. It's hard to be injured when someone hasn't shown anything besides one start where he was trying some stuff out. So I, I can't knock Alec Manoa right now unless he, like, we'll yeah. see if he doesn't triple A. Yeah, I mean, just ha- not having the full spring seems to throw a bunch of people off. So that that sucks for him. Uh, there's some fantasy sleepers. I can't talk about that. I have a fantasy show. Watch those videos <laughs> instead. Yeah. Better prop bet. You can bet props on Sports Interaction. Do that. Vladdy over home runs this year or judge under home runs this year? Uh, Vladdy over home runs. I, I think, uh, man, he his two-hand finish swing, I'm drinking the I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm drinking the Van, I'm drinking the Vladdy Kool-Aid, but his uh his two-handed finish swing looks incredible. Yeah. And he is shitting on baseballs, dude. The video I did yesterday, I'll break it down for some people who didn't who didn't watch it or Maybe I presented in a way you can't understand, which is fine. It's 
some of those numbers are crazy. What Vladdy did in 2021 was he basically couldn't hit anything at the lower third of the zone. And makes sense. If you're going to hit home runs, there's a better chance of you launching a ball at a desired launch angle on balls up in the zone, right? Yeah. That makes plenty of sense. So he had holes in his swing at the bottom. And that, I think, is it helps for power hitters because if you are making contact at the bottom of the zone, there's not a lot of chance it's going to go into the outfield. There's a way better chance it goes into the infield. And you have less, uh, worse launch angles. But he just smokes baseballs into the ground at the bottom third of the zone. He has some of the best launch angles in baseball. Uh, sorry, not launch angles, exit velocities in baseballs. But he had so many outlier velocities. Balls that were hit at 115 in 2021. He just doesn't do that right now. And he covers so much of the bottom part of the zone. Like He makes the most in-zone contact of his career last season. And it follows it up with the worst isolated slug, which is pretty much just how much power you hit for it. So he... It's like, okay, I'm going to cover more of the plate. I don't think he meant to do this, but it seemed like a team-wide philosophy. Hey, we're going to cover more of the plate, not strike out as much. They actually had a worse strikeout percentage than the year before. I did those stats. So whatever they did, they hit for way less power. It just didn't work. So Vladdy, seeing those pitches up, taking some of them, that you're going to strike out still. Vladdy can strike. Let your power hitters strike out. It's modern baseball. It's fine. That's what happens. Look at Schwarber, dude. Yeah, this is I'm not asking him to be Schwarber. <laughs> no. He will. Someone will have his head on a stick in Toronto if he's Schwarber. He hits one fifty, and I think hitting forty seven home runs rocks and good OBP. Uh, but strike out at twenty two percent, Vladdy, instead of seventeen. Yeah, and swing and miss at the bottom of the zone instead of making shitty contact uh, on balls on the outside that just go into the infield because you can't beat anything out. It's same with Kirk and it's same with Springer as well. Yeah. So Vladdy, let's see balls up this year. Hit him runs. The two handed swing finish looks awesome too. You're so right yeah. about that. Someone asked about the full uniform game. I think we've got to do it. Uh, we we're go to the people. We're going we on the people. road. We're going on the road for the full uniform game. That's fair, but we owe it to the people. I think, but I, I counterpoint for that it's more electric when more people notice us and come up to us at jay's games it's good better for the vlog it is funnier yeah. like uh yeah. we owe it to the people unfortunately because last year the audio was bad right true like that, yeah true. judah you know? judah's got to wear a full uniform with us if he's going to be yes. the cameraman yeah he has to that's that like that's, that's the, his punishment that's his punishment uh sorry judah but that's just what happens that's uh <laughs> kangaroo court so yes um, you have to wear the full uniform. I was thinking of of wearing a suit to opening day too. It's just like a business. It's business trip this year. It is a business trip. But someone asked what opening day. Uh, we're in, we're in negotiations right now about doing some sort of like live show in a certain quote unquote hotel that might may or may not be located inside of the stadium. Uh, they have reached out to us again. I, this is still crazy to me that we're we've reached here. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm very very excited. Yeah. We didn't go it. to opening day. Or home opener last year, either home opener last year or the year yeah. before. Are you? Did you go the year before? Twenty twenty two. I was. Yeah. I, I think I was in Philly for Bryson's debut. So yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I was there for that as well. Okay, I'll, that's all the Discord questions. We we answered most of them. Yeah, and, and most of the questions we have here on Twitter are stuff we'll answer on the Sunday pod. Um, but uh, yeah, another thing. Obviously, as we go into the season here, one thing with me is, and I don't know, you can sometimes talk me off the ledge with this is, is it fucks with me mentally. Is like and I got to do better at this is being more appreciative of like what gate 14 has done. I mean, like, I, I don't know if you do this, but sometimes I catch myself like never satisfied with stuff. I don't know if you're, if you're kind of like that, but I, I, that's one thing I will work on this season. I need people to hold me accountable for it. Cause some days I'm like, I'm not satisfied. I want fucking more. And uh, sometimes I got to be able to take a step back and be like, Holy shit. Like, look at this crazy uh, podcast and crazy brand we've built. So that's one thing I will work on this year for myself. I'm also not good at good at that at all. Even with work stuff, it's like, hey, it's the next thing. It's always the next thing. What are you gonna do next? What's gonna make it bigger? But uh, I'll always appreciate the people. It for one thing, it's the DMs that I get. Uh, they're pretty positive for me, so I appreciate that. Uh, the people are awesome, so I'm always happy to do it. And for yeah, you and I know a lot, like a pretty decent amount of people come up to me at the bar. Like Saturday was pretty, or Sunday night was pretty crazy after Zach Bryan, and one guy came up to me. I know he's listening. Just like roasting IKF for like 30 minutes to me. If you're going to do that, if you're going to come up to me at the bar and like, I'm obviously gracious, like I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you about the Jays, all that. 
And if you're just going to roast a player for like 30, 40 minutes to me and like bring like bring up baseball savant pages and quotes and stuff like that, I'm just not going to have it. Like <laughs> not- I, I was trying to be cordial with it, but it was just insane shit. I know he was probably banged up, but just some of the most insane stuff. The guy comes up to me and just starts torching IKF, like torching him. He hasn't so, even played a game yet. <laughs> yeah, we haven't played a game yet. So I don't know, man. It's just um, I'll, I'll, I, I got to be more appreciative this year. And like having yeah. that certain quote unquote hotel reach out to us, that's a really good sign. Like that comes out of nowhere where I'm like, all right, like we're doing something right here, clearly. So uh, I am appreciative of that. And uh, what a brand we've built, man. It's, and this season is going to be absolutely insane. The live streams. Uh, we will be doing a live stream once a week at the Sports Interaction Studio, which is going to be awesome because it'll be like a full production, which is sick, like really good cameras, uh, really good microphones. We'll be watching the game with interacting with the people. So that will be very fun uh, once a week, but that won't change our streaming schedule. We'll still be stream- streaming pretty much every single game uh, this season. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be every Tuesday in April we'll be doing from the Sports Interaction Studio. So uh, tons of big things coming up here for Gate 14. And uh, – yeah, I mean, we're one week away, folks. We are one week away. This time next week, it'll be Blue Jays uh, opening day eve. Uh, Zach Eflin versus Jose Barrios. So sick, man. So sick. So as always, love you guys. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment on all the stuff. We do appreciate that as well. Let us know we're doing great. And, and the hoodies. Uh, hoodies, we got to get them out soon. Hoodies, yeah. We have to set up the bank account for the Gate 14. We're a registered we- business, hashtag small business owner. But <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get that done sometime next week. I'll... If- uh, if anyone I mean, works at a bank and wants to help out small business, set up a bank account. Let us know. I mean, there's a Scotia Bank uh, in Guelph yeah. here that's open till six that we could just fire after work. Which yeah, is we like, should do, we should just yeah, do we that. Should, we could just go to that. I'll, I'll book an appointment. I have but one of the cards. Hoodies. Once we get the bank account, uh, we'll figure that out. And we'll then... make the hoodies live pretty much almost immediately. The distributor is a part of the website now, so he gets notification once they're ordered. Uh, we will have the Nike hoodies. The Nike hoodies are, gonna... are expe- They're going to be expensive. It. The product is quite literally very expensive. Yeah, it's literally Nike, and it's yeah. not cheap. So uh, we'll have that ready for you guys, and uh, we'll have a cheaper hoodie, which is like the same logo on it, same design, but uh, not as durable and not as long-lasting. But that's yeah. what you kind of pay for with that. So um, love you guys. Gate 14 forever, and let's uh, let's enjoy this last week here, and let's go into the season and uh, watch some ball. <laughs>